Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the 34th sprint demo meeting of TOS. Um, we're going to go through a few um, demos today. Uh, Jupyter Hub, as I built, and uh, a little bit of internal, TOS internal stuff. So let's do it. Marek, you're up first. All right. Hello, everyone. Let me just share the screen and we can start. Here we go. Okay. Can you see the screen? There should be a beautiful VS Code page. It is. Perfect. Okay, so let me first explain uh, what we are trying to do here and what I'm gonna uh, what I'm gonna present to you. So uh, uh, we call it a build builder workflow, and the goal here is uh, to build multiple packages, uh, uh, to, to build uh, multiple images from different repositories. So um, here is an image that should sort of demonstrate it. Let me just uh, make it a little bit bigger. So uh, we have this master repository that's called Tot, Tot Station Jupyter Notebooks. This is the one that I'm uh, having open here. And in this repository, uh, there are multiple submodules pointing to different uh, repositories. These are S2I, S2I Minimal Notebook, S2I SciPy Notebook, and S2I TensorFlow Notebook. Uh, this master repo is is a private one. Uh, let's say we have some secrets, uh, some secrets there. Uh, we don't want the world to see it. And yet we want to connect it with our uh, cluster and use it to build our images. Um, so the way we do that is that we create a trigger from each of these uh, submodules here, from each of these these. Uh, let's call it master and slave, uh, even though it's not very precise uh, terminology, but from these slave repos, each of them uh, have uh, a has a trigger. And if you push into that repo, the trigger is activated and it creates a PR to the master repo. Once that PR is merged, it requires um, human intervention, or uh, we can in the future use bots to just uh, evaluate the PR and, and merge it. Uh, once that PR is merged, there is an actions runner. An actions runner uh, is something provided by GitHub and usually it is hosted. So if you run a GitHub action or GitHub workflow, whatever you wanna call it, uh, that is something that, that's defined in the repository and it looks this in one it looks something like this um so typically you would use something like ubuntu here or any other runner provided by github but in this case we deployed our own actions runner and it runs an open shift so this is uh, the one Jupyter Notebook GitHub Actions Runner. And what happens is that uh, if you merge, sorry, how do I open the logs? If you merge a PR, that runner automatically detects it and runs the job that is defined in here as build, which is this job. And what the job does is it submits a workflow. So the workflow is uh, the workflow is a workflow that uh, builds multiple images, and these are the slave repositories like S2I uh, Minimal Build, S2I SciPy Notebook, and uh, the TensorFlow Notebook. So let me just uh, somehow demonstrate this thing in action. So first of all. There is one pull request already because I updated the S2 TensorFlow notebook. Okay, so let's not update this one. Let's update another one. So say I want to update the SciPy notebook and let's do a simple update of readme here. So can you see the terminal? 
if not, it's not really that, that important. Uh, I'm just going to copy the packages and extensions uh, that are here, and I'm going to paste them to the readme that we have them there. Uh, now, let's just commit that. Say readme. Push it. We go back here. There's a SciPy notebook, and we look into actions, and an action has been triggered. So right here, we can see that it hasn't started yet. OK, it did. Now it checks out the repository. It updates the submodules here uh, of the master repo. And it creates pull requests to that repo. So let's wait for it. and see if we get the pull request here already. The SciPy notebook is here. Our Sacheta bot has created the pull request. And a builder workflow has started. So if we look at the builder workflow, it's already submitted the workflow with these parameters. So, oh, sorry, with these parameters. So we're building uh, SY minimal notebook. Uh, no, sorry, this is builder image. We're building uh... Oh, there's a bug. We should build SciPy notebook, but we're building an SY minimal notebook and we call it SciPy notebook. Good to know. And we're building TensorFlow notebooks. So if we switch to OpenShift and look at the pods. It's already started. Let me just refresh, be sure, and see what's going on. And the workflow has started, but uh, it will take a while because it's a it, it's a heavy one. So right now it's probably initializing uh, initializing uh, these uh, build configs for for the notebooks. And once that's done, uh, these Images will be pushed to Quay and are ready, uh, ready for use for Open Data Hub or Jupyter Hub. And the cluster is pretty slow. I wanted uh, to show you actually the, the workflow that's uh, triggering usually quite, quite fast, but somehow not now. But maybe at least I can show you the why here. Yeah, the build unfortunately hasn't started yet. So first, uh, what it does is it builds the S2I minimal image, and based on the S2I minimal image, it then uh, builds the SciPI and the TensorFlow uh, based on that. And it just failed because of something uh, good to know. What the fuck was on it? Well, maybe just uh, maybe some images uh, in the in the cluster have changed because that's not that's not usual, but it's a demo, so in fact it is. Um, yes. Any questions from from your side, guys? Yeah, so you basically demo two workflows, right? The first one was uh, creating a PR to the repository, which um, I can also do manually or is it um how how does it work can i can i human being submit a pull request to that um hidden or private repository yes if you have access to the repository um you just submit pull requests uh which updates any of the sub modules and the builder workflow will be automatically triggered Okay, and exactly that is uh, the second workflow that you showed. Um, that private repository is used to build um, and push the container images to Quay. Okay. Um, yes. 
beside the fact that uh, ports are running on your mm -hmm. personal namespace on OpenShift, um, all the GitHub actions and all that stuff is live, so we can use it anytime, correct? That's correct, yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool, uh, that's, and, that's my uh, question. Yes, and uh, the, the, it shouldn't run on pull requests, actually. Uh, it should run on on pushes only, so that's another thing that should be that should be fixed here. Uh, by the way, the reason why we use private repo here uh, for anyone who wanted to create a similar setup is that uh, it's sort of unsafe uh, if you run your self-hosted runner uh, in a uh, secure environment here. Uh, if it wasn't a private repo, anybody could clone it and run their own workflow with your runner, which would uh, be a good opportunity to exploit that cluster. So that's why we want to uh, have this repo private, and that's why we chose this architecture. That way we can have uh, people contributing to these repositories, which are basically submodules, without us um, and being worried about the security measures. Any other questions? By the way, all of these workflows uh, just 20 minutes before the demo completed successfully. So. I don't know what a flake this is. <clears throat> well, it's a demo. Larger audience, yeah. more failures. There's an obvious correlation between that. Cool. Um, thanks for that. Uh, thanks uh, for the demo. Um, I think we should show that to the whole AI CUE um, sooner than later, right? So, um, yeah, let's let's see um, if we find a time slot and uh, do like like a 15 minute session on how to use all that stuff. Maybe it's helping people already. I think uh, Anand, um, or was it Anish? No, it was Anand, right? Um, he could benefit from that for his Katakoda um, work. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, who wants to go next, uh, Sai or Kevin? Yeah, I can go next. Cool, good. Yeah, so we have a S2I build process that is used in OpenShift to like put your source files directly into an image and run it in OpenShift. So we are using thought S2I images here to use Thamos advice and all the intelligent devices that we can get from thought application here. So this tutorial is basically a way to figure out how to do that. And so we are going to use like the thought is to I build process in this. So this is like a very simple Python application that just logs hello thought every 10 seconds. And the image that we're going to use here is Python 3.6 from thoughts library, which you can find on quay slash organization slash thought station. Uh, I've already started this scenario here on another tab, as you can see. And this is like a sample OpenShift environment 4 point, on a 4.2 version. So we can log in as admin over here, and then we're going to create our own project. And once we have that, we're going to move into the next section and explore what we can do with the thought S2I image process. So, uh, so the thought S2I sample application for the convenience of the tutorial is already present over here. As you can go and like fork out your own repo from there, which I've already done. And if you can check out, it already has an openshift.yaml file, which right here uses the thought UBI Python 3.6, but we offer other images also if you want to try an experiment. Apart from that, uh, we do have like uh, the source repo, which we want to run the image on, that is written over here in the build config itself. And we are trying to use the branch log thought over here. 
and as you can see in the OpenShift YAML file, uh, we have various different configurations that we can set as environment variables. Right now, the thought host that we are going to use is like api.moc, which is a public facing endpoint. And we are going to put th thought advice as one, which is basically forcing us to use thought advice. And in case like thought has a better recommendation for your stack, that's what you're going to receive in the build image. And we have also set like, so this is the uh, build that we want to use. And back to the build. So yeah, this is more explained over here, like all the different parameters that you can tinker around with. You can also explore some Thamos parameters that you can try out. And yeah, that's about it. And so in case you want to try out, you could change these parameters in your fork repo. And but here for the demo, we are going to like use the repo that we already forked and we're going to try building it and see what happens. As you can see, like all the images from my repo have now been submitted to OpenShift. And you can go to your console, which is already there, and log into the build over here. And you could check out. Uh, obviously, you have to select your project, that is my project. And as you can see, the build has started running. So ideally, you can check out the logs over here and see what advice you uh, like Thamos is suggesting for your application, which you can also do on your repos if you want to use the Thamos tool, which we are using and like you can just do Thamos advice on the repo that you have forked and you can try out all the Thamos configurations over there and also receive recommendation from there. And the build process goes on and once it's over, you should see it on the workloads as your pod application running. Any questions? No questions, but uh, comment. Uh, nice one. I think um, that is uh, and of the interactive uh, version of the documentation that we have. That is uh, very good. Um, I, I think I said that earlier. Our purpose here is to put that on the um, virtual AI COE booth of the virtual Red Hat Summit. Um, so Marcel is assembling all that stuff. Um, do you think it is valuable to feedback with um, or Anish, Anand, and um, have his input on, on what you did? Yeah, I think like I'll first put it up in our DevOps channel. You guys could like see if you can improve the documentation a little bit. And so this is okay. on my repo right now. And we have to do a PR to the AICOE branch and they'll review it and suggest us what more we can do on it. And if it gets approved, it will get added over there. Okay, so maybe open up that uh, PR to the AICU repository and everybody who okay. finds something uh, working on size repository, please comment on, on that PR so that we see what's happening and uh, stuff like that. Okay, and the MOC thing is right now failing, so once that works out, it should show up in the build process. Yeah, um, Hashad, it feels like MOC had a few problems uh, this morning, right? Yeah, it was under maintenance. I think it should work now. Okay, okay thanks. Cool. Uh, thanks, uh, Sai. Um, what else we got? Ah, Kevin, uh, package update consumer. Yes, yeah, so this should be pretty quick. Um, I, I planned a little bit more, but uh, 
uh, I did go over the uh, quota for the GitHub API. So there's not going to be any moving parts. It's just going to kind of be the results. Uh, can everybody wait, see my screen? Wait, 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 wait. Um, first of all, you, you have uh, sent more than 6,000 API requests to GitHub per hour? I think it was a 1,000 or it might have been 5,000. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, I okay. I think I uh, messed something up with the uh, dot distinct. Okay. And so was, the second comment is requests. second comment is you're falling into the Wayland uh, blue jeans demo trap because we only see a black screen. That's that's awful because we can't fix it quickly because you need to log yeah, on. And... Oh, cool. Let's do yeah, it. I can just share the, the one screen. Um, I'm actually going to share a different screen really quick just uh, to show the. Um... Actually, never mind. It's not showing up. I'll just show this, this screen then. Um, I'm just going to show the uh, first the uh, database. Uh, can you see the database? Yes. Cool. All right. So I just set the origin for all of the advisor runs uh, to my own personal repository. Uh, that way, uh, I had the auth, auth token and everything for it. Um, and then if I hop over to the issues for that repository, we see a few issues here. Um, this one's for like a missing package that went missing from PyPI. Uh, and then we also have um, hash mismatch over here. Um, so like automated message from package change detected on uh, on thought package update. Um, it's nice and, nice and simple. And then uh, the idea here would be that the uh, maintainers the repository would figure out what, what to do with these or we'd uh, rerun a Kebuchet advise so that it is automatically um, updated. Uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions? Um, why do you reset the origin of the repository? Because you want to open issues for for the missing packages or something, right? Yeah, because there was there's no origin set. So I just needed it to point to some repository. So I just acted like the advisor is run on my personal repo. Was, okay, yeah. I see. And um, can can f for us uh, for for our team's use, um, we can create another con uh, consumer on the same topic, which is notifying ourselves just basically for fun in the uh, Hangouts channel. That is something that we could do, right? Yes. Okay. Nice. Cool. Any any other questions to Kevin? Good. Any other demos? Anything that we haven't listed before? Nice. Um, Sixteen hours and 52 minutes. Gentlemen and ladies, uh, have a nice weekend. Uh, stay safe in these times. Stay sane. If you need to talk, call me or call any of your colleagues and uh, have a nice weekend. Ciao.